giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. FTC top 25 time. We've got 25 awesome teams that have played Ultimate Goal. To be eligible, teams had to have an uncensored match video with their robot playing Ultimate Goal, uh, regardless of whether it was traditional or remote. Um, and this helped decide. We put out the poll on Sunday, I believe, and you had until Tuesday to vote for who you thought were the top 25 teams. And if you see a team that you think should be on here that we don't mention, uh, make sure to vote next time. That way you can vote for that team and they can get into the top 25. So without further ado, Abbas, take it away. Sure. So starting off, starting us off tonight in the 25th place is Team 10219, Batteries Not Included, from Marietta, Georgia. You know, they have been an incredibly successful team in the past couple of years and are no different this year. Uh, in their most recent meet on January 14th, they consistently scored right around 100 each match. And from what we can see in this video, it looks like they're only doing mid-goal shots during teleop, you know. And I think this is an interesting strategy. You know, it definitely doesn't, it's definitely not going to score as many points as high goal but you know when we get to traditional events i guess we'll see if it does anything to their strategy uh driving on the other side of the field shooting only mid shots there maybe that's what they're thinking any thoughts guys yeah um, overall, i expect them to improve a lot because mm -hmm. i know at least from relic recovery and skystone they got a lot better as the season went on since they got better at driving um don't know brooks you had something to say um, yeah, about shooting in the mid goal on the other side of the um, field, I think in, while watching one of the Russia um, live events, I believe one team did that to Team KTM, which was a really big team there. And that really did seem to slow them down. So I actually really want to see that strategy to yeah. see if it'd be effective. Right. Once you get to a traditional event, there's so many different strategies that you could do, right? You could try to just pile in on your high goal and try to keep all the rings on your side. Or you could send one robot over to the other side, steal rings from the other side, and then shoot cross field. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. I'm really, like, this game was perfect for traditional events, and I'm sad that it's all virtual. It's the two. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we'll see some more as the season goes on. And MTI is likely happening in August, so we'll definitely see some of the top teams there. Awesome. I wonder if MTI will be before Worlds this year. <laughs> that would be something. Go ahead. All right. And 24th is Team 12599 Overcharged from Portland, Oregon. Even though I don't think this team had any um, official events up until now, people vote them in the top 25 with just a couple of clips to release, which says a lot about their potential. I remember seeing the first video they posted of their robot on the FTC Discord, and I was just in awe about the speed and accuracy of this machine. The simplicity and elegance of the quoted Lynn Dexter is just incredible too. The six-wheel drive and competition could push around other Mechanon bots as well. Everything about this route just points to it being among the best this year, especially in live events. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that definitely that Lindexer is just incredible. The consistency, the accuracy, all with the speed. It's I mean, it's pretty much unparalleled right now, I think. One thing that I am surprised about is how late in the season it is that they're releasing these videos. Usually Overcharge is like one of the first to put out like a reveal. And um, they also usually have like a pretty solid robot by like December time. So if that video represents what their current robot is, I'm a little surprised. But I think that overall, they're a top team. Definitely can't be slept on. Right. Um, I think I think every teams or all the teams this year are facing you know a little delay in their whole build process just with COVID and everything. I mean, most meets right now are at like meet two or meet threes are just starting, and you know typically we'd have league championships, states you know, just getting started and things like that. So I think I'm really excited to see their matches. I can't wait. Yeah. So in the 23rd spot, we got team 16244, the Trail Blazers from Dunlap, Illinois. They competed in a virtual event and had an accurate dual flywheel shooter. They also recollected rings during autonomous, allowing them to score an extra 12 points. They were good at hitting the power shots during endgame, but overall they could score a little bit more and speed themselves up for the future. Um, it's a solid robot. I, there, I don't think there's anything else really to say about it. They've got a uh, nice pass. It's not a pass through. It's a come in from the front, shoot out from the front uh, mechanism. And they're also able to do the wobble ball. Anything else you guys notice? No, I mean, you know, I think you covered it all. It's just a general solid robot that should perform well for the rest of the season. And, you know, I'm sure they'll be making changes uh, as the season progresses anyways. So I'm really excited to see what they come out with. 
Um, in 22nd, we have team 6596 from Port Byron, Illinois. Currently, they are ranked number 30 on the FTC on FTCStats.org. And at the Illinois Remote Meet in mid-December, they're scoring above 150 each match. Uh, looks like they have both wall goals, parking, and three high shots in auto, with a decent end game and a couple high shots in teleop for their uh, top matches. Something I found interesting about them just while doing you know, research and looking at their scores is that they use the paper scoring method, but also recorded their matches. So, you know, I guess some teams just prefer that traditional scoring style uh, when doing matches this year. Uh, another thing that I noticed is if the audio is on, you can also hear that there's, there's definitely a motor running the whole time consistently. And so what I'm thinking is that they're kind of running their motor at a, sh uh, at a, at their shooter motor at a slow speed the entire match. And then so they can speed up, you know, a little bit quicker. And maybe they did the math or did they, they did some testing with the amp draws and all of that. And, you know, they found it didn't have a huge impact uh, on their match. So they decided to run it the whole time. I think that's an interesting strategy and, you know, something we might see from other teams, um, especially with, like, inertia wheels and, you know, adding mass to the wheels and things like that. Are, are your teams keeping your mind uh, you know, currently we aren't, but I might try this uh, after after seeing this just to see, you know, how the current draws work. Yeah, ours isn't either. Um, our thought is like, if you just click that third ring, then there's going to be enough time to spin up. But it's not a bad idea to try out. Maybe you can shave yeah. off some time with that, especially if it's a really long spin up time. And you know, with a two uh, two motor gearbox that like we have, the spin up time is really really quick. So, I I I don't see like a huge advantage unless you're doing a one motor shooter. Makes sense. All right, just missing the top 20 in 21st place was team 15005 Technophobia. They've got a clean looking robot this year with a pass through design and belts to guide the rings into the shooter. Their intake is nice and wide, but they could use a little bit of work on their shooter accuracy. They're driving really well and I look forward to seeing what improvements they make in the future. I think this is like the standard case of you didn't put enough inertia on your shooter. They're using one of those rev hubs, like the rev plastic wheels, um, which aren't the heaviest. Um, so if they swap that wheel out, I think they would be easily top 10 in this competition. Uh, they're shooting a lot of rings. It's just a matter of them making it into the goal. What about you guys? Sure. No, I, you know, I think you hit the nail right on the head. Their intake is really, really solid. And, you know, it's just the accuracy and consistency with the shooter, which I think a lot of teams are going to struggle with this year. It's just finding the solutions and, you know, implementing them really well. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Shooting is definitely a big part of this game. I know for um, our league meet, our shooter kind of died down a little bit. And, this, and of course, scores are greatly affected by that. And it seems that with, with the shooters, it's definitely dependent on the how you index the rings as well to kind of cater to your indexing mm -hmm. system to really build it off of that. So um, teams really have to integrate well with the shooter, definitely. Great. Want to move on to the next one? Yeah. In 20th is 18523 Vertigo from Highland Park, Illinois. They got a great intake, great blue design, and are exploring the new Gobilda Mechanum wheels. Their average from their most recent event was 182.5, and their highest was in the mid-200s. Their shooter seems slightly inaccurate, but like most things with time, I can only see it getting better. Overall, a pretty dang good team. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I love those new Gobilda wheels. Really thin, really, uh, you know, really good, really fast. Uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot of great things from them, especially this year uh, and the other teams using them. Yeah, I remember these guys in Relic Recovery. Um, they came out with an eight-wheel Mechanum drive because they just wanted more pushing force on the crowd. And it was absolutely, I love that robot. Um, they were filling ciphers with it. And they've overall been like a really solid team. Um, throughout the years, so we'll we'll see how they can improve it. I'm really hoping that Illinois has a state championship because we're seeing a lot of top teams from Illinois making this oh, yeah. five list. Yeah. All right. Okay. In 19th place, we have team 18190, the Tiger Bots from Georgia. And although they haven't played any official matches yet, or the scores haven't come out, uh, they do seem to hit hit a couple power shots and in endgame and have a lot of those green wheels uh, that we're seeing on robots this season. Uh, you know, I think it's really interesting how Aperture Science and the rest of these teams, uh, including Tigerbots, have set up this like four, uh, you know, four robot stream so they can all do matches at the same time and talk and, you know, whatever, just to make that real meet experience a little bit more uh, real. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I was actually really surprised. They were one of the best teams at the scrimmage, and <laughs> there were a lot of really good teams here. Uh, they were shooting really quickly, and overall, they looked like really good drivers, like yeah. really good drivers. So definitely some team to lo- look out for. I think they're from – where Where are they from again? They're from Georgia. Okay, yeah. So G- Georgia, another team, uh, another big region that's been popping up a lot. Uh, in this top 25. I just love seeing, by the way, that there are teams who are being innovative and they're like, well, you know, first isn't going to give us any sort of official, you know, way of doing this. We're just going to do it on our own. And I love that so much. I mean, that's a lot of what fun's about, right, is is that we're we're doing that as a community. And I really love that teams are doing this. And, and I really hope that first catches on at some point and says, hey, you know what, maybe we should officially support something like this because the teams are going to do it anyway. So why the hell wouldn't we do it as well? I'm not going to call it a full rant, by the way. Oh, I actually had a, a typo with Sean. They're actually from North Carolina with, with all the North other Carolina. teams. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's my bad. So, so I think this was a scrimmage that they were doing at North Carolina to test yeah. out their system. Um, I know our previous fun host, Ethan, was on the stream. Uh, they should be using this system, as far as I know, for future North Carolina events, which is oh, great awesome. because we get to see all the top teams from North Carolina there. Um, yeah. And there's top teams like Aperture Science, Swift, um, Tiger bots. Um, so we'll we'll have to take a look out for that. In the 18th spot, we've got team 16428, Trial and Terror. They've got a shooter and wobble goal mechanism as well as a nice parking auto. They could really use some driver practice and had a lot of um, they had a lot of disconnects. Uh, but overall they were a bot with potential. So definitely somebody to look out for. Mm-hmm. All right, I guess I'll go on. And the 17th spot is 18175 FTC Techies Robotics from Charlotte, North Carolina. A little mysterious how this team managed to squeak into the top 25 as they are a pushbot. Um, they run with what seems to be a Gobota strafer kit with some cardboard side panels, but clearly some people think this can be a competitive team this year. I guess we'll just have to, you know, wait and see what they come out with. So I talked to the team. Uh, this team released this spot, I think, early November. And this was just their first prototype. They did uh, not have a video of them running the bot later, but they've run it at actual competitions and they've scored high. And that's why they ended up in the top 25. <laughs> but they just didn't have a video of it. Uh, uh, that makes sense. So teams, please record videos and upload them. Just please. Um, yeah. Hopefully we'll get a better video of them for next time if they make the top 25. Yep. All right. In 16th place, meet uh, Team 7083, the Tundra Bots, also from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. In this scrimmage match, we can see that they move around the wobble goals and have a very low place shooter. And they're able to hit those power shots. And, you know, as Brooks mentioned earlier, I'm loving those 96 millimeter go build a wheels. Uh, what do you guys think about, like, the whole low shooter, high shooter discussion uh, that's been going around in the community a little bit? Uh, yeah, so go ahead. No point in going low. I mean, mm-hmm. you're going to get blocked, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. why would you build a ro- low robot? You have 18 <laughs> inches of space. Go go all the way. Right. I guess, like, weight is, like, the one, you know, one point of contention is, you know, lower robot, less material, lighter weight, you can go faster. Uh, you know, for example, last year we saw with small stem, they were just really quick around the field uh, in taking blocks or in taking stones right and left the whole time. So... Maybe maybe we'll see some cool stuff from lower robots this year. So not even just from the lower robot, but just your your angle that you're shooting from seems to make way more sense right. to shoot high on something like that. Right, right. I know teams have found that uh, a higher shooter, like a higher shooter with a lower angle, is more consistent than a lower shooter uh, with a higher angle. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense. Just you know, if you do if, if you do the trajectory on it, right, is that essentially right. the area right. that you have to get that. Uh, 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 what's the game piece called? Why am I why am I missing this? The ring. The ring. Thank you. I was saying this. Sorry. The ring. You know, to get that through is you essentially are almost splitting it in half of the amount of space you have for something like that. Yep. I gotta stop Tyler from ranting because I bet on him not ranting today. I I haven't gone full rant yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna determine that not full rant yet. <laughs> All right. Go on okay. to the next one. All right. Taking 15th spot is a team I'm personally very excited about this season. It's team 5064 Aperture Science from Elon, North Carolina. The Rover Ruckus World Championship World Champions are back at it again with a truly amazing robot. The shooter is super quick in shooting the rings, but from the video, it also seems perfectly accurate too. Combined with a top-class auto and simple design, they really deserve to be on this list. 
I also love the look and of the black and blue McCann wheels going round and round and round. Beautiful robot and the telly up and the shoot the shooter's just flawless. Like I just it's amazing. It's yeah, super, you know, it's super quiet too. Like I don't think I can hear it. I think one thing we've seen from Aperture Science year after year is just a simple, really, you know, well developed design that's it's not overly complex, just driver practice, consistent design and Go I mean it. it's been Pick working. There's no argument about that. Three, two, yeah, one one of the, like if they should not be fifteenth. They should easily be top ten, maybe even top five. I know some people were betting on them being first. Um they deserve to be in the top ten, top five. If you have not heard of this team, like they are one of the all time legend. They've been doing this before I got into the program and they're still doing it afterwards. So really awesome team. I really hope they make it higher in the next top twenty five because they definitely deserve it. I really want to see them play on the field um with some more matches because I think yes, they're driving well, but they have a little bit more that they can get out of that robot that would push them right over the edge. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go on to the next team. In 14th place, we have Team Robotics Eagles, uh, Robotic Eagles from the Marietta League in Georgia, uh, setting the Georgia record in December of 225 points. Uh, I think this team has been doing pretty well both this year and last year in Georgia, and especially this year, they have four. Yes, four high shots in auto, one wobble goal, and a park. And, you know, I think uh, I can't wait to see their scores once they get two wobble goals. And, you know, maybe they'll even go for more uh, high shots when it's uh, four rings on the, on the starter stack. And, you know, they seem to have a very consistent shooter. And as we've been saying this whole night, it's something super, super important this year is just that accuracy and nailing it down. And it's uh, another one of those low bots that, you know, we've, we've seen a uh, couple, couple times tonight. Anything you guys want to add? Um, yeah, well, low bot, and again, you see kind of a little bit of a shorter of that intake, um, mm-hmm. too. So maybe if they had a, com- a lot wider, it'd be a little bit easier to take up the rings. But again, you kind of see, like, maybe good driving kind of makes up for it. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things with these low intakes is I'm curious if they're having something that actively forces the ring off the ground upwards, or they're just getting a wedge as low as they can to the ground. Because when you have a wedge that goes as low as you can to the ground, depending on what surface your playing field is played on, right? I know Worlds always puts carpet under their playing field, which gets sink in, which means that a wedge that's super low to the ground would definitely rub against the ground, scrape against it, and you wouldn't actually be able to move properly. So Mm -hmm. we'll have to see. A A lot of these teams that have solid intakes at home may not have solid intakes once traditional events come along. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, 13th spot goes to 14.525 Terabats from San Jose, California. Their top score from November 29th was 265 points. In this video, it shows them with a six-ring auto. That's all just incredible, and I can only imagine where their bot is right now. Like, that was all back in November. I love their design of intaking rings to a back stack to a linear shooter. Seems very simple and easily manageable. Like the short linear motion of transferring the hopper to the shooter, you can kind of see it push the rings forward, which I think was kind of cool. Um, the ring pathing on this robot in general is just really neat. Their entire design is super simple too, which will help with reliability. Yeah, yeah you know, interesting. I think... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. The interesting that they're using a phone system. So like I saw a big flashlight on the front of their robot and that seemed to be like the flash from the phone. So I'm surprised they're not using the control hub because they've definitely got a super reliable robot. And I think by moving that phone away, it would give you a little bit more space to maybe speed up the intake or uh, give you a little bit more space for that shooter. Uh, so, but overall they've done a great job with implementing all parts of their robot. Mm-hmm. All right, almost in the top 10, we have team 11144, the Barker Bluebacks from Australia. You know, the whole uh, Barker Robotics organization this year has just absolutely killed it with, I think, all seven or eight of their teams. Uh, And the Bluebacks, like all of their sister teams, are putting up really high scores. Uh, Almost breaking 200 in this video, their indexer is just incredibly fast. You know, I think that's something all of the Barker teams have nailed this year, getting that really, really fast indexer, and it's, it's definitely paying off in their scores. Do you guys have anything to add on them? I find it hilarious that they're using uh, Colson wheels, right? That's what they're called. <laughs> um, as an F- FTC team, rarely see that. Um, but they definitely are the grippiest wheels for FTC. And it definitely shows how they're 
an FRC team converted to FTC team. Yeah, that's a like, definite FRC holdover right there. <laughs> like, a lot of their robots look like they've got the FRC aesthetic and they're pretty much all custom. And for for teams that may or may not be doing this for their first year, I think it's a it's a pretty cool design. Yeah, you can also see that. I think that's four-wheel drive, I think I saw with the four Colsons. Like, you don't see that often in FTC, especially this high in class. Yep. Taking the 11th spot is Team 11147, the Barker Purplebacks, another Barker team. Uh, this Barker team, just like the others, is amazing. Uh, they've got a really quick robot that can weave around the field. Um, their shooter is very accurate, even though they... and even though they have a very fast shooting rate. So they're they are able to shoot off the disc really quickly and they're able to shoot them accurately. Unlike a lot of teams, they're able to score power shots in auto. A lot of teams have been missing out on this. So I'm I'm really glad to see that. And the only thing that would easily make them in the top ten is a faster intake. They've got a pretty narrow one that's a little bit on the slower side. So hoping they can fix that up if they uh, do qualify for worlds, which I don't know. Does do you guys know if Australia goes to Detroit Worlds or Houston World. They got to Houston. Yeah, yeah Houston. They, okay. They oh. they've had their national championship. Um, right. They had there. their national championship pretty early this season. Yeah. So so we'll see. Barker pretty much swept it, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of hilarious. But we'll we'll have to see what happens with qualification for Worlds from there. I think in the past it's only been one or two teams, but there's so many good teams from there now. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping that it's not just one or two. Well, the Graybacks and the Purplebacks are the top two ranked teams, so. You know, yeah. I'm sure they'll probably get their slots. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.